We're looking at all these shots that we've taken on pigs in the last couple days and playing them back in slow motion and just trying to figure out how much the pigs are moving, how fast they're reacting to the sound of the shot. And the variability in the what the pigs do and what the animals do at each shot. We actually caught three different reactions to the bow going off and all of these shots are under 20 yards. One of the main questions we get from you all concerning the heavy setups is that they're too slow. They w Will they beat a whitetail? They're definitely gonna be slower than your speed bow stuff, but Greg and I spent over 10 years looking at slow motion footage of hundreds of archery kills on deer. And with lots and lots of speed setups, you know, north of 300 feet per second. And that was the one conclusion we could make was that it is too unpredictable. The deer is going to move regardless of what you're shooting. You can't beat them. There's not a bow that shoots fast enough. Right, yeah. You're not going to get the arrow there in time to beat them. The one solution that the heavier setups with the, you know, adult broadheads gives you is if these animals jump, and we've got two on here that are rocked and knocked over, is the opportunity to break things when it gets there. The first shot here we're looking at is Ted doubled last night, and uh, <laughs> the, he's the double death guy. I think he doubled in like eight minutes. I mean, I didn't want you to oh, wait yeah. around too yeah, long. <laughs> <laughs> so this first shot, this pig came in before the deer feeder went off. And um, for all you guys who are worried about deer feeders, Ted said it great last night when we were in the truck. He said, this is a really cool way to get to shoot a lot at live animals. I said, yeah, that's why I started the test lab concept is you can do things that you just can't do because we have an unlimited supply of targets. So Ted's, this pig's actually relatively calm when it came in. It's way before it's six minutes or eight minutes before the feeder goes off. It's that shot's 18 yards. If it's, tw it didn't 20, I promise you. Mm -hmm. And that's a 550 grain arrow. And this pig drops we think it's six, six inches, inches. yeah so his shot is on target until it gets there he not only drops straight down though he also wheels and turns and almost lunges slightly forward mm -hmm. that's kind of the i mean these things are unpredictable you right. don't you just don't know what they're going to do right. and it's only 20 yards away right so ted's shot was on target when he shot and the pig changed the whole game i mean it drops like a rock. You can see it just disappears into the grass and then it impact. It looks like it's on its knees. Yeah. <laughs> it's really far down. And there's yeah, but no... it just zaps him. I yeah. mean, there's blood coming out of that hole yeah, immediately. <laughs> immediately. A lot of blood. Because it drives in, I'm assuming hits one of those arteries or something that's right. in the spine so the, and it runs the, down the, the arteries spine. are running right under the spine and so he hit the spine and then he cut the abdominal or thoracic aorta. But to, uh, to even get to that stuff, there's... It's about that pig, that's about this thick and and the shoulder blades there too so he broke shoulder blade and he hit the spine and then he severed the aorta with a 550 grain arrow and a cut on contact that's durable you were shooting the hornet i think yeah yeah, yeah you're shooting the hornet it it did the job that situation right there you can't predict that if that pig would have stood still like a 3d target that would have been a complete armpit pass through and we wouldn't have had any trouble at all so then we're we, we go over there we grab that pig grab it slide it behind the blind giggling like a couple of crazy people because we're like man maybe they'll come back <laughs> and the feeder goes off and i mean two minutes later here yeah. comes pigs this one takes it like a champ but it spins and rotates away yeah it does it's like a quarter it's a almost full broadside it at the shot and by, when the arrow hits the pig, it's slightly quartering away. But you, know? you see, one thing I notice about this pig, he only spins. He doesn't drop as much. He just spins. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. The other pig it. dropped like a rock. Yeah, that's true. This one just rolls away. How are you going to predict that, right? I mean, it's just really very difficult thing to And it's the to same. it's the same thing with whitetails. Yep. And I would assume that whitetails down here are even jumpier. Our deer are the size of coos deer. Yeah. They're tiny. I mean, yeah. the bucks are a little bigger, but the does and stuff are 90 pounds because they're Jimmy Buffett deer, and it's hot here a lot, so they're lean and mean, and they are bouncy. Then the one advantage you have on a pig is their legs are short. They can only go so far, but a deer's legs, you know, they're this long. They can really get to dropping. If everything goes right, nobody here is arguing that if everything goes right, you're fine with whatever you're shooting. I, that pig right there with a 300 foot per second bow hit there is the same result, okay? The previous pig that he shot, we don't know. I, I can't tell you 100% if 
changing the setup to a faster one would have had the same spine breaking result. We don't know that. I just know that I've seen a whole lot more success on plan B hits with the heavier we've, stuff. We've lost, we've seen seen a lot more game, lots game of, running off with the arrow sticking way out of right, it. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right. Lots of deer, especially mature bucks over the years getting hit high. Right. And running off with the arrow and it and never find them. Right. So you'd rather snap their and spine that's with and roll speed, them right there. That's with speed yeah. setups because we've only been doing this this heavy stuff for a year. Right. You know, our, our sample size is tiny on deer compared to your sample size right. on pigs. Right. Except for the other end of the spectrum. We have tons of deer Tons farms. of examples of speed setups and light arrows not beating deer. I right. guess that's what I'm saying. Right. And that's the target animal for most of you guys that are watching. Obviously, that's what these guys do, right? The deer, you just, we just want you to consider becoming more effective and lethal when you're, sh when you're deer hunting and that you'll get your deer. The third one here is... Uh, this is wild. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jake and his uh, favorite hunting guy, Thomas Fowler. <laughs> and I don't know what this boar was thinking, but he decided to chew Tom and, uh, Tom and Jake's leg off. That's about a 600 grain arrow. Is that what he's coming to, this pig is doing? Is coming out to charge it to? No, I think he's just coming out to find out what you guys are. I got you. He just, his ears are up and he's kind of curious looking This right. is, this is like the ultimate test. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and this pig rolls and the, I think he all just shot a foot. It's the full width of his body. Mm -hmm. I mean, he look at that duck. There's no, yeah, no there's crazy. no predicting that. He could have stood there and took it like a champ. But he just, he rolls and starts to turn away and zap that broadhead. I think he was, you were shooting the iron wheel wide. Yeah. And he's got a 100, 120 grain insert in there. It's a 250 spine arrow. We tuned it up yesterday. That shot's a, how far was that shot, Thomas? 15 yards. 15? Oh. Yeah. So they stalked up on this pig and I don't know what he was thinking, but he had a bad day. That broadhead penetrated two inches of spinal bone <laughs> and buried and then he, he cut the, the arteries in the neck and blood was just spraying out. The pig didn't move a muscle. Right, he just no, rolled he right there. he stopped right there. Right, did no tracking, which and is our, we like no tracking. Yeah. It's way cooler yeah. than not track. It's just, it's unbelievable how thick everything is up in the front of those pigs. Mm -hmm. Like that, you said that's a average size boar? That one's about 135 pounds. Okay. So he's a normal boar for this place. He's probably a two year old. And, um, but he had a shield about, oh, it was about a half an inch thick had some mud and hair on the side you know the hair's real coarse the mud's real thick and then, and then he's the driving through the top of the spine right, right there so and the spine on these pigs is like that tall right? yeah <laughs> and then the the broadhead penetrated easily two inches of bone buried and rocked and rolled him over but that's but, a realistic shot that we get ourselves a lot hunting on the ground for deer because like they'll it, come in looking for you yeah. especially when you call at them yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that or even just sometimes like that, deer will see you, and they like if you're on the ground, they're kind of curious sometimes. I mean, yeah. we've been talking about it for a long time. Yeah. Now, about yeah. whether or not we can take frontal shots. Yeah, right, so. and don't take it if you're not comfortable with it, because it's a, you know, it's a, can be a low odd shot if you don't have the heavy setups and you don't have super sharp broadheads and everything. You, you need to be conscious of your shot placement and your shot selection that's your number one thing this shot but, this angle of a shot is where the adult broadheads start to shine yeah they don't break and three blade heads suffer greatly here because they're they're a three blade wedge nothing is a when you have a two blade head this blade's opposing this blade and it's helping it cut in three blades you got one up here and they're all opposing they turn into a wedge okay but this is where a super durable high quality broadhead will do this kind of work and the really cheap stuff, the cheaper cheaper brands and some of the stuff with like .035 blades, they're just gonna shred. Trust me, I have broken everything. And um, it wasn't until I started to really increase my broadhead quality, get them sharp, make sure they're made out of great steel. Spend, here's the deal. If, if, if you gotta choose to spend money, spend, buy in, more inexpensive arrows, get them tuned and shoot great broadheads. Do it backwards and it's gonna help. I mean, that's a great Sharpen sample. the heck out of them. We just yeah. filmed the video on sharpening yeah. yesterday. And if you, you know, just keep learning, keep growing, and keep learning and tinkering, and you'll get better. That's why I wanted to go to this stuff was because of that elk tag that I have this year. I knew yeah. a year ago that I was going to end up with it. And lots of uh, super successful elk hunters out west, are, they take that frontal shot mm -hmm. because they're calling elk in through thick brush, 
the bull pops in and he's usually close 15 like 20, yards yeah. 20 and in mm -hmm. but they walk up there and they're facing directly at him yep you know in quartering <laughs> angles and that's a and, big target so i get this a lot on my comments i know you guys get smoked on this so the frontal shot on an elk that's a big freaking animal and it's like i mean if yeah. he's facing dead at you the it's the, the spot you have to shoot at where right. you're not really even going to encounter any bones is that big. It's that big it's just a big hole right here in the thorax and if you can't hit that so i, I get the comments that say wow that's kind of a risky shot i mean how good are you right have you everybody talks about how great they are on the 3d range and how accurate they shoot their bow and all that stuff and then they get in these situations and say that's a risky shot shooting something that big 15 yards at 15 yards you don't take that shot at 45 no just be smart right but at 15 with a single level broadhead and a 550 grain hyper tuned arrow that's not going to be a problem we just had a lady in the ashby foundation shoot an asiatic buffalo with a 50 pound bow and an 800 grain arrow with a single level on it facing her <laughs> and she shot it right there and it hit the pelvis Jeez. 1800 pound buffalo with a 50 pound bow yeah and Rob's going to be here later. He's the one who did who built our arrows for. Right. And it just, we get him to show us the video. It just goes, shoot. I mean, it, it doesn't wiggle or anything. Just do. <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe. But if you're going to go elk hunting and you're going to be calling and doing those kind of things, you have to expect that your elk's going to come in. He's not going to walk in backwards. He's not going to walk with his butt to you to <laughs> challenge you with his butt. That's not how this works. I mean, it sounds funny, but... It just you just got to get your head wrapped around it and then they're least likely to turn broadside because it exposes them to whatever they're looking at they're yeah. going to fight with their horns yeah it's just very practical and so that's the shot you're going to get a lot of the time you showed me that video of that one and you wisely did not shoot because you were not confident 10 yards yeah and you had the vital v in a hole that big and you just said i was not, not confident sure. because i had a 400 and some grain arrow in a in a replaceable fixed blade broadhead that and I hadn't sharpened three anything. years ago right yeah so well, that, that's been four or five years that was in 2016 right so let me let me let me reverse engineer that because I've only known these guys for a year and a half now right but I've been around them now for two days he's shooting video for Midwest whitetail hundreds of shots on camera he has the experience at that time before he's talked to the crazy ranch fairy to know that he's undergunned you knew it yeah because of the previous years of video that you've done yeah you were literally in your head going i've seen this on a deer it is not gonna work no. you had no other experience guiding you saying man if i had a 600 grand this is probably the shot that wasn't in your head it was all those videos i've seen all the stuff that didn't work and here i am on a 700 pound animal that's not it's not gonna work let down yeah it was wise probably and you might have gotten away with it and a lot of you guys are going to say, I would have shot him anyway. Put that in the comments and we'll just blast you out. It'll be fine. <laughs> just shoot anyway. We could lose him. We might get him. <laughs> I'm going to err on the side of Aaron here, who has all this experience looking at video. It's just, that's one of those things you guys have got to start listening to people like this who've seen hundreds of kills. It's just a hard thing to say that you're going to try to beat a uh, deer jumping the string when you can't even watch it back. Mentally, you might think it's like fast enough and it's going to be faster. Or I used to think that. Yeah. Like I, did I mean, too. I shot light setups, mechanicals, those hundred grain fixed blades for years and years. Killed lots of deer with them. Sure. I'm not saying that they don't work. No, they do. They work just fine. Shot placement is key, regardless of what you're shooting. Right. That's always going to be the number one thing. Right. And that's going to be in the comments down below. You guys are going to be saying shot never, placement is number one. Yeah. That's all this other stuff doesn't matter. We know it's number one. Right. We know it. I a never miss. Perfectly missed. tuned bow is, <laughs> is real important. Right. Yeah. I mean, my An arrow that's flying straight. My like, bow shooting better now than it has in my entire life. Yeah, right. Mine too. That's right. <laughs> but as far as shot places is, is concerned, these three examples show you there. It was 100% uncontrollable. These are short shots, relatively calm animals, except for Jake's that was pinned. You know, he's pinned up, staring at him, kind of bowed up. But that's a realistic situation. Completely realistic, especially for what you guys do when you have these deer just walking by in these woodlots and you don't have bait, you know, they're not going to stop and you have to do what you have to do. And that's why we need you just it, just take it into consideration, right? I mean, we not, advocate for for close shots, yep. taking shots inside of 30 yards. Absolutely. And like all of these pigs are 20 and in. Oh, tight. And you it's know. intentional, yep. right? I can't test. I'm not going to test distance. 
I'm just going to test the factory this. So I'm going to get these things as close as I can so I can work on that. At distance, anything you see here just got worse. There's no way it gets better. They jump, e they're jumping even further because they're in motion. None of these pigs stopped moving. Right. So if I'd have shot at 40, I'd have, we'd have probably whiffed a couple, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think you might have shot yours in the butt at 40. Uh, I want to shot at mine. But <laughs> no, I understand that. Yeah, but if, no, if we sure. were one of these long range guys, yeah. you'd have shot him in the butt. Yeah. I guarantee yeah. you. Or gut shot him, mm -hmm. right? It would have been a foot back in his guts. So your arrow was fast enough. <laughs> 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 yep. Take that into consideration when you're mentally going through this. Are you going to build an arrow system that can do as much as as possible for whatever it's going to hit? Or are you building an arrow to get there as fast as possible and praying you hit them perfect? Because these are three examples of three different animals under 20 going three different directions. Stuff you cannot control. You can't control you it. You can't control it. Only thing you can do is shoot a super, super sharp, super tough broadhead right. and make sure that your stuff is tuned. And then when you hit them perfect, you won't have a problem. Like yep. your, your second pig, yeah. even though it spun, that, that was a textbook hit. My buddy Chris, we didn't get video. He shot one last night, pinned it right through the shoulder blades, mm -hmm. and it, he didn't even blood trail. He just walked over to the brush and it was right there, right? <laughs> Yours bled like crazy. Your first one was went 40 yards. Yeah. Crime scene. And it was a crime scene. The average mm -hmm. pig is one about probably 20, 30 yeah. yards. Right. Killed five <laughs> pigs so far, and I don't think one has made it over 50 yards. No. Right. Right. And that's, that's why we do this. It's really fun. And, you know, I think I said this earlier, but when we got the truck, Tev was like, this is so cool that you can actually just test. You know, you're going to kind of get a shot. It's pretty predictable. It's super fun to get to just shoot stuff. It isn't always yeah. under the gun on your one tag in Missouri or wherever you're at. And here we are. And that's all I get to shoot at. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun that way. All right. Well, thanks for watching everybody. And uh, just like I said, take this stuff into consideration that these are great examples. Just keep watching, and uh, and thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having yeah. us, man. Yeah, yeah. Ranch Bear Channel. Yeah, y'all yeah. been good, doing great.